<laughs> Welcome to Kyra Author Insights. I'm with Dr. Umat Mashar, and this is an incredible opportunity for us to talk to an amazing and naturopathic doctor who also has a master's in nutrition and a specialization in fertility. A speaker and a best selling author in the area and expertise of both holistic nutrition and fertility. Her groundbreaking book, Fertility Secrets What Your Doctor Didn't Tell You About Baby Making, is incredible and a unique insight into the body-mind connection around fertility. The creator of the Fertility Success Method. Welcome, Dr. Shah. It's amazing to have you here today. Thanks so much for having me here. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm super excited to talk to you because I know that you've got such incredible insights, not only into the, the area of fertility, but pro-vitality, which is really a, an essence of pro-fertility um, and the ability to be able to conceive naturally and with incredible health and well-being. So before we talk about the book itself, I'd love just a little bit of background about your, your expertise, your journey, uh, who you are and how you've got here. Yeah, absolutely. So I started on this journey probably th about 30 years ago now. Uh, and my first steps into it were through the meditation world, actually. I was really intrigued and I was like, what is this stuff around enlightenment and how do we get there? So that was my initial, like when I was a teenager, that's what I was into. <laughs> and then I went to college as a pre-med major and I kept asking my professors and, and like mentors, how do we bridge the body, mind, spirit? Like it doesn't seem to me that pre-med is really it for me because we're not talking about the other components of humans. And they're like, well, that doesn't integrate. You know, if you want to be a doctor, you're going to need to just be into the body stuff. And that was kind of it. And I believe I got to the end of my four years in college. And I remember it being like a month from graduation and feeling really lost. Like, what was I going to do with my life? Because I didn't really want to go into med medicine at that point. And, and I had majored in biology, psychology, and religion. <laughs> and it was like, this is how I see it all fit together. <laughs> and most of my professors were like, maybe you want to go to California. That might, you might find someone there that's into what you're into. <laughs> and, and then I got a pamphlet, essentially like junk mail, that was from a naturopathic college. And the cover said body, mind, spirit. And I literally was in tears. I was like, how did nobody tell me? Like, there's a whole field. Their cover is body, mind, spirit. Someone else had to have known about this. But naturopathic medicine at that point was really kind of fringe still. And not a lot of people knew about it. And definitely not where I went to undergrad. <laughs> I went to undergrad in New Jersey, which is not the most progressive of places. Uh, so it was unusual. But I pretty much decided overnight, I was like, this is it. This is how I become a doctor. I want to be a naturopathic doctor. And so I went to medical school, graduated, moved out to California eventually, and started practicing medicine, mostly women's health. And then I got into fertility. And that's a whole, like, whole story in and of itself. <laughs> but the short version is I really, I was married to the wrong person and getting to that age where they say fertility magically disappears and I just had started researching and I was like what is this like does fertility really d disappear at 35 should I be worried about this should I freeze my eggs so I was in this whole like personal journey simultaneously a friend from an acupuncture clinic was like hey can you come help us at the clinic our doctor just quit so I like went and filled in at that clinic and the head acupuncturist was a fertility specialist. And she's like, oh, you're a naturopathic doctor that does know something about fertility? Great. Here are all these patients I haven't gotten pregnant yet. And they all started getting pregnant within a few months. And she's like, I don't know what you're doing, but this 
there's something to what you're doing. <laughs> and that was the initial like journey into the fertility world. And I just ended up falling in love and was like, I can't imagine doing anything else. And you, you do incredible work. You've changed so many lives and, and you brought life to so many um, to so many families because of the ability to work with people and the frustration and it's such a difficult uh, you know, environment for people to be in. You know, the doubt, the uncertainty that they have about the ability to conceive and the capacity to, to fulfill their, their life dream of you know, having a family and, and unifying with, with a child. So the gift you give uh, are life-changing and so valuable. So firstly, thank you for that. And I just want to recognise the work that you do. And, and that led to, you know, this, you went deep into this process, you became an expert, you, your expertise allowed that impact to become even more significant, to have broader scope, and you were able to put that into a book. So tell us a little bit about the journey of writing Fertility Secrets and, and how that came about. Yeah, so I started, um, it was pretty much like, with, within the first few months of me starting the fertility work, I was at a meditation retreat and got this like download or this woo woo thing about all the components related to fertility and how it all synchronized and worked together. And, and so I wrote that down. That was my initial map. When I was getting all of this information, I was, I was in tears essentially. I was like, I have worked my entire life has led to this moment, you know? And just to think about like all of the, the ripple effect of everything that I had been interested in or training in and how it all just like fit into helping support the vitality and, and fertility of couples and families to like have the family that they dreamed of. So that was kind of the initial pieces. And, and then I started looking around and I was like, who else is doing this work? Am I the, the only weirdo out here? And I started researching to see if there were other naturopathic doctors that had a similar approach. And there were, I would say, very few doctors that even recognized how naturopathic medicine could play a significant role in fertility work. Um, but there was definitely not anyone that was approaching it the way that I was. So that was the beginning of like, maybe I should write a book about this. And, and then I would see patients and they were like, you got to write a book. Why don't you have a book? And they would just keep asking like, where's your book? I want to just read, read all of what we're doing. And, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. For three years, I was just telling people, yes, I'm writing a book, but I had an outline and I knew I had all the pieces, but I hadn't like researched and put it all together. Um, so three years in and I was like, yeah, I really haven't made any progress. Let's be super honest here. Um, my priority is patience and when I'm not with patients, I'm taking a little breather, you know, like I'm going to go out and hike and be in nature and do whatever. So writing that, like, uh, you, I'm sure you are aware of this process. It's like, it's, it takes a lot. And it's, and anyone that has written a book is like, writing that book was a really incredible journey. And that's part of why you're doing these interviews is like, you know, so I ended up in LA at some point at some workshop where one of the speakers was talking about writing a book and the way that they approached it was you would work with their team to basically like speak your book and and then you can go back in later and like fill in all the research that's needed to support what you're saying but you could just speak your book and I was like, I could totally do that. I could definitely speak. <laughs> so, so I signed up to work with them. And six months later, we had at least the like content of the book. And then, and then I worked with their editor for another six months to really have them like suss out 
they questioned me on each and everything and they were like we're not doctors but where's the what supports that and like picked it apart to be like why do you say that where's the research for that and that process was really amazing because it gave me the the kind of foundation or the strength to stand and say what we do works i know that it works because i've seen it in clinical practice but now i can like back it up with all of these research studies that are actually out there it's not that there isn't research in this world it's just that we haven't put all of those pieces together so that's really like i'm so appreciative of that process because i feel like if i had written the book myself i probably would have put it out without all the research and like oh but here are all the stories and here's why it's successful um but to have that foundation and and that like groundedness in there is actual clinical science data behind all of this makes it even stronger even a stronger like um book as far as i i'm concerned <laughs> and that's that's a really important insight because i know that you know we, we we know what we know as practitioners and we see the results we get and the impact that we have and, and the lives change as a result and we know that we do things differently to other practitioners because everybody is an individual we have our own personal expression and then on top of that we we know it in in such a profound experiential way but to be able to recognize that that can be validated by research that is independent of what we do, but we need to draw that in to offer the, the credibility in the written form because a book that says, gee, I can change your life versus here is how I've changed the lives of tens of hundreds of thousands of people supported by research that is clinically and scientifically valid offers a lot more authority, credibility, and therefore a more powerful and compelling story. And that's what you've done with your book is you've been able to bring your clinical experience, the transformative stories. And then on top of that, the research and science that says, this is why and how it happens. It becomes a beautiful expression of the skill, the knowledge and ability you have. So I think that the way you've you know, taken that journey and the realization is so important, not just for you, but for practitioners everywhere. And also for the, the patients reading or the community that gets hold of it to say, there is a way forward that I can have confidence in, that I can believe in and that offers me certainty. And your book really does that as well. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, you know, the research is great for me as well as like other practitioners. But as far as patients are concerned, they're like, when the number of emails that I still get, this book came out in 2017. So for, for me, it's like, okay, that was a long time ago. But people still write in and say, thank you so much for your book. I read it in two days. I couldn't put it down because... It, just all the stories in there help to make it relatable for patients to feel like, oh, she gets me. There are other people out there that are going through exactly what I'm going through and she's helped them. So maybe there's hope for me yet. Um, and with fertility, it's like such a journey of, of like how to sustain hope that, you know, that hope is just really, really vital. To their process that's beautiful and and again you've written a book and you said people email email you in and they reach out to you connect with a great it's a beautiful thing to be able to have that feedback what type of stories do they tell what type of experiences are they having through connecting with you via a book i think that the the most prominent scenario has been hey i read your book how do i work with you you know that's the instant like um, response to as really super inspired you gave me hope you gave me information I've done some of this already on my own but I want to help have your help in taking it to the next level so that's been the most overwhelming response and then there are other people that are like oh you helped me click this thing into place and like go bring it back to my practitioner of like why we shouldn't take progesterone or whatever um, and so filling those missing pieces in for um, patients who can then be empowered to just like apply it in wherever they are in their journey, which is also really powerful. It's like we can't work with everyone everywhere. So 
it's really nice to have a book that can really impact more people and people can say like, hey, I, I can read this book and, and like get the information, but go and apply it myself or go and apply it with a practitioner that I'm already working with um, who can support me better in that path. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and again, you've, you've just mentioned that, you know, you write the book, people read it, they're inspired by it, they have the value that adds to them, the impact that it has, and they reach out and say, look, I'd love to work with you. So the book obviously becomes a really powerful tool to help you, you know, reach out to the community, serve your community, have an impact, also grow your practice at the same time. Has it, has it led to a, a massive uh, inflow of new patients because of the, the authority you have in that as an author? Mm, yes and no. I definitely thought it was going to be uh, like, oh my God, the floodgates are going to open and we're not going to have any time. <laughs> but I would say that there is there is a balance and it's been a, a increase in flow, but not necessarily a floodgate. So it's been like a really manageable kind of flow of new people that are like, oh, I read your book or, oh, I heard you on a podcast. And I guess that's the other response from the book is um, getting interviewed more frequently on podcasts. I think in the last 12 months, I would say probably been on like 40 different podcasts and people just are constantly like, oh, I heard you on this podcast and I read your book and, you know, you reappeared in my world in some other way and now I'm ready. So I think it's that the book, uh, for a lot of people, maybe it works like, hey, I wrote a book and now all of a sudden I have, you know, 30 practitioners that I are working for me and, and we have amazing busy practices. So that's one option. But I think for me, like where I was and what I anticipated is to really have an increase in the number of patients that are reaching out. But it's also that we, we are offering like a really niche service that is really intense. <laughs> it's not for everyone. And that intensity is like the book, the podcasts, all the other things where how they're engaging or touching base with us help to ease that process and make them feel more comfortable of like, absolutely, I'm going to choose working with you over working with a reproductive endocrinologist, where in the fertility world, that's a big deal to for people to make that shift from, I'm just going to go do IVF to actually, my doctor said that I need IVF right now, and I'm not going to do it until we work together. And like, I've improved some of my health and vitality and hormones, all of the things that we work on. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a jump for people. <laughs> it's not the easiest jump. So all of the things that are like the outward facing things, podcasts and books and stuff are really great touch points for people to say, oh, I can trust this person. I can, I know that she can help me if she says that she can help me. <laughs> um, we don't tell that to everyone, but we, you know, we take it very seriously to say thank you for putting your trust in us because we understand what it took for you to go from what your reproductive endocrinologist is saying and they're saying maybe you have a few more months on your on your ovary clock and we're saying well we're gonna take those few months and really support your fertility and they're like oh shit like it's a we're asking for a lot <laughs> there are a lot of other fertility practitioners who say oh I'm gonna just support your IVF cycle and that's great but that's often not enough so the people that we work with are really like are, they're putting a higher level of trust to say nope I'm putting a pause or a pin in that route and I'm gonna go a completely different path um so I think they need all of those different um, touch points to say, yes, I can trust you. Yes, I can believe in what you're offering. And yes, it's going to help me get to the goal that I want to get to. 
the brain. So the book preempts that journey. And so in a way, it, it pre-qualifies the right person for you, for your yes. style, for your approach. And you said the high intensity approach. So for a person that's not committed, that is maybe interested, but not really willing to do the work necessary and would rather somebody take responsibility for them, you're already identifying or self-identifying the way that you work so that they can identify whether they want to work with you. So it really does offer you that, that a clear pathway for them via the work that you do, which is unique to your own approach. Yeah, so I think that's exactly. great. And how did that link to, because I know you, you, you've created the, um, the fertility success method and that's your unique way of doing it. How does the book link into your unique way of delivering you know, your program within practice? Uh, it is, so it is that method. <laughs> um, so the fertility success method is a four step process, discover, detox, rebalance, receive. I think I maybe didn't even have those exact words when I wrote the book, but it goes through those four steps and the journey that I believe people need to take to get to that like amazing optimal fertility state for men and women. Um, so the book kind of takes people through that journey and then it shows through examples where I believe the people that got success got in that part of the journey. Like in the discovery phase, we discovered, oh, this person actually has PCOS and was never diagnosed. Or in the detox phase, like, oh, they had all these heavy metals and we should really get rid of those before you try and get pregnant. Otherwise, the baby is going to inherit some of this. So it just walks through that journey with examples of other people who were in that process and got their, the most of their results or the most um, benefits from that particular phase of the journey. And then um, I think you had another another question, something about a link between Look, I think the process what, and the book. You go there, what I've understood by what you're saying is you have this beautiful um, method, you have a practice that you already knew what it was and the book reflects that. So in, again, that comes back to that point I made earlier. Because the book is the journey that they will go through, the, you know, the fertility success method is what will happen when they come to see you. The book exp expresses and explores that, tells the story of that. So again, it, it shows them the journey ahead of them. And if that journey is right for them, the book has already predicted that and, and created the, the uh, first of the relationship. Like I get, they, they, they read it and they say, I get what you're saying. That makes sense to me. And that's what I would like to experience because of your body, mind, spirit approach to it you'll attract the right person person to you through your book. And they already know what they're going to experience because the book details that. Exactly. And so I think it's a, and I think it's a really important for, for practitioners to understand when they do write a book, it, it, when it relates to the, to the patient journey, to the, to the experience they have, it is preempting the relationship because they already know what is going to take place. So I think, I think when you tell that story to me, I go, it makes perfect sense both as a writer and as a practitioner to, again, link those two together to, to unify and bridge them. And I think you, you do a wonderful, wonderful job with that. Thank you. If, if you come back, you know, if we can just come back to the, to your experience, not just as a writer, but what it has meant, not clinically, what, not what it has meant for either growing the practice or otherwise, what has it meant personally for you to, to go into that experience of writing a book? To, and again, you had somebody guide you, you were able to, to, to speak the book, which is, again, the way I encourage and recommend practitioners do. Um, when you finally wrote that book, when you got the message out from in here and in here onto the pages, how did you feel? What, 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 again, you, you have fertility as part of your expertise. A lot of times practitioners talk about the book is like a birthing process. So maybe there'll be a, an interesting <laughs> uh, correlation here for you to share. But yeah. tell me, you know, at the end of the day, you've written the book. What does that mean to you? Um, exactly. <laughs> that was, I, I call it my, my second baby. My first baby is my practice. The second baby is the book. And the third child is my actual child. So I, I definitely feel like I needed to birth the book before I could, like, have a family and, and, and like have a child, a real child. Um, so I definitely felt like the process was 
pretty much a nine month process. It was, it was like really interestingly linked to a pregnancy. And I got pregnant a week after the book was released, which is not at all surprising to me because it just felt like, like, wow, I gave what I really wanted to give to the world. And now I can like be in a more internal inward process. So I think that was really phenomenal. The other pieces around just realizing how much, um, how much I needed that like groundedness to grow, right? So if you imagine a tree, a tree that doesn't have deep roots is probably not going to survive a long time. But I felt like a tree that was really skinny that didn't really have a ton of roots, but the book really helped me grow deeper into the roots, which then has helped me grow more in terms of being a tree and having more leaves and, and fruit. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's, that's think... a beautiful analogy. And, and it does, <laughs> a, it, in that way, it grounds you. It offers you certainty in your ability, your knowledge, your skills. It gives you the clarity. Um, it, it offers you a path forward that you already knew, but the ability to put that into paper, uh, you know, codifies that and clarifies that. Um, so I, I love that story and that analogy because I think the expertise, you're already an expert before you write the book, but the expertise that comes as a result in that book is the certainty that you have in that expertise. And what I'm hearing is when you do that, you become so grounded and rooted in that knowledge, it has, it has the ability to, then to offer stability to other people as well. So like the tree, people can climb on a tree if it's a stable tree, if it's a, if it's a tree that bends in, in the wind, it's it doesn't offer other people outside of yourself that stability. So I think now people can lean on you. People can rise to their potential through the certainty and the strength and that groundedness you have. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think, and that's a really great extension of the analogy. It's like really that, that groundedness and that feeling of stability has, is leading into what's next. So for me, you know, I think a lot of us practitioners are often like, well, how do I help more people? Um, so for me, that answer has, or has now become since the book, um, it's been how d training other people to be able to lean on me so that we can all like support more couples who really need that support. So I think really in the last year, um, since the book, there's been lots of practitioners that have been like, hey, can I get your consultation? Can I do a consultation for my client with you? Um, so that's been happening a lot. But um, in the last year, I really put it into practice of like, we're just creating a training program and consultations are great, but that's not enough information for you to go and be a fertility specialist. So I need to really like grow my ability and use all of this groundedness to be supporting other practitioners to become fertility specialists if that's their path. Um, so that's really where we're at now is, is growing this network of people that want to use the fertility success method to help support their clients to get pregnant. Well, that's beautiful. So eventually it may become a licensed um, program and you have the ability to extend your service and impact from a, a patient. At the moment, you've got a patient focus through your book, but now it can become a peer focus as well for them. And not only do you get, therefore, dozens or hundreds or thousands of people pregnant through your own effort through this program, but you could be doing hundreds of thousands of people by serving other practitioners to achieve the same outcome. Right. And it becomes an incredible legacy. Writing a book leads to one step beyond what you imagined was possible into changing, in fact, hundreds and thousands of lives by serving dozens and thousands of um, practitioners. So it's a compelling vision. It's a beautiful opportunity to serve. Dr. Shah, I wish you incredible success with that vision. I'm excited for you for what you've been able to achieve already until I know what is going to come next. Do you have any closing words, any closing thoughts for you know, the practitioners out there that, who may want to you know, realise their vision and dream of writing a book and impacting the world on a greater basis? 
Yeah, uh, I would, if you're thinking about writing a book and you have a book in you, just do it. Do what you need to do to get it out. <laughs> Birth that book. Um, Beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for your time. You're an amazing speaker, an amazing giver in terms of the, the changes and impact you're having on people's lives. We will have all your contact details you know, under the video um, as well as um, on, our, on our Facebook page. Thank you so much for your time. I am so grateful for what you do for your, for your community and for your patients and now for the, the profession as well. Thank Thanks you. so much for having me. <laughs> very welcome. I look forward to speaking with you also on the, the, the Family Wellness Super Summit. Absolutely.